world news. It's less than a day to go before Americans head to the polls in presidential elections. Mr. Trump has renewed his claim that the system is rigged against him after the FBI announced on Sunday that it had found no evidence of criminality by Mrs. Clinton in the latest batch of emails to be examined. Hillary Clinton, on her part, is trying to make history by becoming America's first female president. Well, BBC Africa, Zura Yunus is in Washington, D.C. And Zura, Hillary Clinton is not the first woman to run for the White House, is she? Absolutely, uh, Peter. Before I respond to that, I just want to inform you that I'm just in front of the White House where either Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump will be living here uh, from early next year. And yes, Hillary Clinton wasn't the first woman to vie for presidency, and especially from the same party, Democratic Party. The first woman was an African American. Her name was Shirley Chisholm, and she did bid for presidency in 1972. Stand before you today as a candidate for the Democratic nomination for the presidency of the United States of America. Shirley Chisholm was a woman of many firsts, the first African-American congresswoman and the first African-American to run for president. But despite being a pioneer for her generation, many people in America still don't know her story. Um, I knew that she died, in, I think, in an unfortunate... Una Clark worked with Shirley during the civil rights movement and remembers a bold, dynamic woman who fought hard to give a voice to minorities. We went to many parties together um, in the old days as Caribbean Americans, so um, she is a legend in her own right. She is a woman that is very honest and very upright, and that's why she's come to be known as unbought and unbossed. Congresswoman Yvette Clark now holds the seat first won by Shirley Chisholm back in 1968, and says Chisholm paved the way for women like her to enter politics. Because she was elected, people could envision another black woman being elected to represent them uh, without her trailblazing victory uh, to the United States Congress. Uh, there's no one, I believe, who's a woman, no one who's a black woman, uh, and no one who's uh, someone of African descent who uh, don't see her as an icon. When your children or grandchildren ask... While things may have improved, this year's election campaign has exposed the challenges that women in politics continue to face. Forty years after Shirley Chisholm ran for the White House, all eyes are now on Hillary Clinton to see if she too can make history by becoming America's first female president. Being both black and a woman, Shirley was no stranger to prejudice in Washington. Part of her kind of motorcade um, in the late 1960s. But those who have studied Chisholm's life say it was her gender that created the most obstacles. So is America ready for a woman in charge of the White House? I think we are ready for a female president. We are behind the other, other parts of the world. I think what this campaign has shown us is that we still have significant sexism within politics and it's something that Chisholm talks about a lot during her run for Congress and her run for the presidency. Please go take people there. We if Hillary Clinton manages to shatter the glass ceiling and win the election, Shirley Chisholm's dream to change the face and future of American politics could become a reality. And joining me here uh, with me is Amira Woods from the Institute for uh, Policy uh, Studies. Thank you very much, Amira. Mm -hmm. how, how easy is it for a woman to survive in politics here in the U.S.? Well, it's very difficult. Let's remember the U.S. Congress, which is the, you know, the, the body that represents all legislatures, has about 18 percent women. So it's very far from countries, you know, South Africa, the list is long of countries that are well over 30 percent. 40 percent, right? Um, and of course, Rwanda tops that list. But here in the U.S., it has, at its historic high, only reached uh, just barely 18 percent, right? So um, the task is, is very hard for women in, in political life here in the U.S., as it is for countries around the world. Um, but these glass ceilings, as they say, are being broken. They're being shattered as we speak. And uh, we hope there will be many more to come, not only in the U.S., in, in my country, Liberia, but in many countries around the world. 
Talking about this particular uh, campaign, which candidate do you think will have a better relationship with Africa? Well, I think that one is clear. From the two candidates that remain, uh, you have uh, one candidate, Donald Trump, who is very much uh, uh, xenophobic, <laughs> many say racist, uh, also misogynist. If you think of U.S.-Africa engagement, there are a lot of question marks in terms this of what a, a Donald Trump presidency today. would bring. Probably the biggest question mark is on this question of immigration, where uh, Africa already is suffered from severe cuts in immigration uh, to the U.S., Legal immigration to the U.S. has been dramatically cut, and it is expected that, uh, I can't even say a President Trump, <laughs> should that to occur, would, um, would further uh, erode any opportunities in diversity visas and other opportunities for, for immigration as he builds his wall, right? So clearly, uh, 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 President Clinton could mean more of the same from an Obama administration. More of the same, some of which is good. Uh, like support for human rights, support for economic rights and, and, and women around the world. But more of the same is also uh, more of the global frame of terrorism and, and the countering terrorism frame, which has militarized U.S. engagement with Africa, which could be detrimental, right? Um, more thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That is Amira Woods from the Institute for Policy Studies. And what do Africans think about these elections? This is a pose between two candidates where from the onset you had a good number of people not taking the other serious. Even from the primaries, people thought Trump was not going to be a candidate in the polls, but he managed to win the primary. So that makes it very interesting. This is a very powerful country whose um, decision they take tends to affect almost all the countries in the world, especially um, the African countries and more especially Ghana, since we, are, we, are, we have this you know, personal relationship with them and also we also rely on them on most of the things that they do and we patronize most of their products and all that. I don't think any of them would make any difference for us, but maybe at least in terms of domestic policy, one of the two candidates, who is obviously Hillary Clinton, will be a bit more progressive than, than Trump. I don't like both candidates because, in my view, both have contributed to the rise of terrorism in the world. I saw some bit on immigration, and I heard she's trying to make it easy and trying to make citizenship yeah, easy for, I don't know, non-Americans, <laughs> which is quite great. Trump is not fit to be president. He just doesn't seem like the typical U.S. president. I just want the best and I'm supporting Larry Clinton. I want the best for her. I want to see the great country of the U.S. under the leadership of a female. I want, to, I want to see how it will look like. So those are the views of Africans across the continent and you will be hearing a lot of African voices from us here in the U.S. Back to you, Peter. Zuhura, you have a very busy 24 hours ahead of you. Try and get some rest. Thanks a lot for speaking oh, to us yes. live there from Washington, D.C. Thank oh, you very yes. much.